everybody, and welcome to Falston FCA's first online virtual lesson. I'm so glad I can join all of you guys today, even when we're away from school. This is the first time we've ever done this kind of thing, and we're excited to be talking to you today. As many of you may recognize, my name is Caleb Atha, and I'm a leader in Falston's Fellowship of Christian Athletes, as well as a junior at Falston High. And I'm going to be sharing this video with my friend Austin, Austin Ritchie, who is also a junior at Falston and also a leader at FCA. Now, before we begin, I'd just like to go over a few announcements about what is coming up in FCA. So we're going to be making and releasing these lesson videos every Wednesday, just like at school. And each lesson is supposed to be a short yet insightful way to dive into God's Word every week. We'll be sharing these lessons through primarily Instagram at FalstonFCA. But as time goes on, we may use other platforms as well. Also, it is important to note that Easter is coming up. On the week of Easter, we will be releasing an easter theme lesson on that Sunday. Now, we at FCA are praying for everyone's wellness as we celebrate this very special time of year. Now that I got that all out of the way, Austin is going to tell you about giving God some control in our lives. Hey guys, Austin here. Why is it important to give God control? Our life is always going to have its problems, and usually we just can't go fix it right away. What we can always do is choose how to respond. There are basically four ways you can respond to a problem. You can trust yourself, trust others, do nothing, or trust God. And of course, trusting God is the best decision because He will never let you down. Other people, and even yourself, can let you down, but God will never let you down. It's super easy to just not do anything and let situations happen, even though it's a lot harder. Trusting in God is not only the right thing to do, but it is also the courageous thing to do. If we don't trust God, we are holding on to this fear. 1 John 4 verses 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. God's love saves us, and when we show that love back, it takes away any fear you have from a situation. God protects you from fear as long as you keep loving God. Holding on to this fear prevents God from transforming us into His perfect image. Well, now that we know why it's important to put our trust in God, it's also fair to ask, is God really in control? Now, a very common question that I hear a lot is, if God is in control, then why do bad things happen to me? And this is a great question. Um, a lot of people ask this, and... Really, the answer is, God doesn't create bad things. We do. But God allows those bad things to exist temporarily. And he does this for a reason. As Paul says in Romans 5, 3 through 4, he says, We know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. So this means that the problems that we created that God allows to exist. God uses those problems to grow our faith and our character so that after God has conquered all the evil in the world, he will have made us into smarter, stronger, and better individuals that are closer to him. Now God understands what we truly need and he knows what's best for us. If we put our trust in him, we will not only make the best decisions, but we will also improve our level of trust in God. So in order to illustrate the concepts of giving God control in our lives and trusting God with our lives, we found an example in Jesus's life. Now this example is in Luke chapter 22, if you want to follow along, and it also coincides with the Easter story. So in this example, Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he knows that he's about to be crucified. Now, that very same night that he's praying in the garden is the night that he's about to be arrested. And the next day, he will be crucified. And Jesus knows this, and he also knows that this is the hardest thing that he will ever do. And he's praying to God, asking him to take his suffering away. Now, in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, Jesus prayed, Father, if it's your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not my will, but your will must be done. Now, Jesus trusts God with his life. He accepts the fact that he will suffer, but he also knew that God would create something beautiful out of his suffering. And we're going to talk more about Jesus' sacrifice and how it affects us in the future in the weeks up to Easter. How do we trust God today? Well, right now we are all at home, 
I'm sure a lot of you are getting bored and anxious for more news about the pandemic, but the best thing you can do is remain physically and mentally strong. Philippians 4 verses 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. It really helps you and your family a ton when you pray to God and tell Him what you need. Thank the Lord for how He has helped you and don't be afraid to ask God for help. Turn off the news and focus on your family and your own community. The numbers might be rising, but in the end, God is in full control and God will help get us through this. So how can you help? Well, you can spread positivity on social media and just talking to your friends and family does a great help. Proverbs 17 verses 22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. you got to remain positive in these tough times, and this positivity is what will get your community through these tough times. Proverbs 17 verses 22 is one of the thousands of examples of verses in the Bible that you can directly use in your own life. If you're not sure what to do at times, just look up a Bible verse for some advice. So what are the main takeaways from this video? First, trust in God. He is always in control and will always help you in times of need when you ask for it. Secondly, even bad things are under God's control. Facing our obstacles alongside God will not only build our character, but also our relationship with God. After all this is over, we will be stronger than before, both personally and as a community. Jeremiah 29 verses 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has a plan for each and every one of us. Not only does he have a plan, but he is willing to help us at any point along the way. All you need is the courage to ask for it and the faith in God. So even though that we can't physically be together right now, guys, we still can always pray together. And we at FCA have developed a prayer for you to pray as we go out through this week. And let's say this prayer together. God, I trust you and your plan for my life. Show me how to trust you instead of trusting my own judgment and take away my fear. Above all, let your will be done and not my own. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And if you have any prayer requests, guys, please message at FHS's FCA page on Instagram or leave a comment and we'll be glad to pray with you on whatever you have for us. And we will have leaders ready to pray for you and your requests. Feel free to get in touch with us, your leaders, and Miss Canatella. We're all happy to talk to you and get in touch with you over the break. And uh, feel free to share this lesson with your friends and your family. Here's a list of some Bible verses that have to do with trusting God. If you need advice, want to learn more, or just have a lot of free time, reading some of these verses is a fulfilling activity to do. Okay, guys, that's just about all we have for you today. And thanks for listening to our video. Um, we are so happy that you were able to listen with us and that you are able to possibly learn something as you're sitting at home. And we hope that you are very healthy and uh, very safe at home. And we are praying for you and we hope that you have a blessed week. All right, we'll see you guys next week.